Welcome to a new season of Cozy Womb Podcast. This is season five of Cozy Womb. My name is Shan, mom of the girls. This is a podcast where we talk about surviving parenting, uh, the realness about prego-ness, and giving really good tips on being our best parent and evolving every day. So if that's what you're looking for, you're at the right place. Hey, moms and dads, welcome back to Cozy Womb Podcast. This is season five, episode eight. Oops, they fell. That's okay, though. It's okay for our kids to mess up. As parents, we mess up. As adults, before we had kids, we messed up. How do we get okay with our kids falling, failing, and missing it by a hair? How will they learn from that? How can we learn from that? That's what we're talking about in this episode. Get comfortable. We're going to talk about it. Let's go. Hey, hey, it's Anya Dula, and I am the host of Intercultured with Anya Dula. Intercultured with Anya Dula is a podcast that focuses on motherhood, culture, birth work, and travel. And it's just a place for women to come together to discuss our philosophies on motherhood, to discuss our work and birth work, if that's what we do, but mainly to bring women of all different cultures together so that we can talk about how we mother, how we hashtag do motherhood so that we can learn from one another and learn to love each other. That's really what it's all about. I hope you'll join us. Intercultured with Anya Dula podcast is available on all the major podcast stations. I hope you'll join us. Can't wait to connect. Living in a house of boys with no friends coming over was strange. Um, I always knew that I was a girl that would rather be by herself than to entertain friends or other people. I liked um, creating my toys that I would play with. I liked drawing people on paper, cutting them out. And using them as characters when I play with my dollhouse. I like um, setting up different scenarios in my room. Moving my bed certain ways in my room so I can feel like it was my space. Okay. And I have evolved into an adult, a mom that likes to be in her house with her kids by herself. (laughs) Um, Which is not crazy when you grow up in a house where there's always people in it. Um, When you get to the point where you can have your own place as an adult, the odds are is you don't want to be around people. Um, Once I just lived with my mom, life got more kid-friendly. So I could go outside, I could make friends, I could ride bikes, I could sleep over friends' houses if I wanted to, but most of the time I regretted it when I was over there. Um... I would scrape my knee and that would be okay. I had a cousin that came to Maryland for summers and she was riding on the um she was riding on the bars of my brother's bike, something I never dared to do as a kid because I didn't want the negative outcome that could come from it. So she was riding on the bars of his bike and, and went over a speed bump and she hit a pole and it split her nose in half. And we had to take her to the fire station that was near the apartments to get um, stitches. Like they had to sew her the flap of her nostril together. (laughs) It's not funny, but when we were kids, it was funny. And just being, you know, not hysterical at, at that as a parent, you know, very calm, very, okay, let's, you know, assess the situation. Let's calm down. Let's, you know one, two, step it, one, two, three. Okay. This is what we're going to do. Have a plan. You have to be able to get a hold of yourself as a parent, whether you're the dad or the mom, you have to 
tell yourself that, you know what, yelling is not going to fix it. Yelling is not going to help the situation. Let's calm down. Let's think this through. What is the best solution right now? What is the best results that we want out of this right now? You know, I jumped off the swing. Like, what kid hasn't jumped off the swing? What kid hasn't jumped from, you know, the biggest rock in the park? What kid uh, didn't try skates that weren't their skates at the playground? What kid uh, wanted to play at the basketball court with the big kids and and, and fall and sprain their ankle? Or, um, you know, instead of you go to the park like you told your mom, you ended up being at the creek trying to catch, um, trying to catch, uh, what were those fish called? Guppies. So, so it's just like... You have to be a kid, but kids today, they don't really play outside, let alone they don't play outside by themselves. Um, They don't explore the outdoors. They're not in the woods. So it's just weird. Like, these kids today are weird. You know how you grew up and you had, like, different scars on your knees? These kids today, their knees are scarless, okay? (laughs) So, you know, being okay with them messing up or being okay with the fact that, you know, you were really into like your books in school you were really big on like your grades and you know having great scores and then you have a kid that's not really good in school they're not good at math they don't like reading um they uh don't care about science they don't find anything interesting their um handwriting looks like chicken scratch like you have to understand that to a certain point your kids are a part of you, but they are not you. So you're going to have to be okay with them um, messing up, okay with them, you know, not getting it right the first couple of times. They will survive. You will survive. So what we could do um, moving forward is allow your kid to mess up. And then both of you can talk about what went wrong and how they can prevent that next time. Guide them, let them explore outside when they want to. Um, Your kids are going to have different personalities if you have more than one. It's so funny because with Anya, I was more like, oh my God, everything is important. I have to do everything right. It has to be perfect. With Ari, I'm just like, girl, you getting this. You don't need that. If somebody's buying you this, we getting rid of something. Like I'm very like um, resourceful now. As a mom of two, I'm very um, no-nonsense. I'm very, uh, this is not a big deal. This is what's going to work for me. This is what's going to have to work for you. You're going to have to deal with it. You are not the only child in my house. That's a hard thing that she's, you would think Ari was the first kid. Ari has a hard time understanding that Anya is going to want to do some things that you don't want to do. And we're going to do them. And you are going to want to do some things that Anya doesn't want to do. You're going to want to watch some things that Anya doesn't want to watch. And Anya doesn't have to play with you. And you don't have to play with Anya. So I'm trying to teach that in the house. And the other night, (laughs) uh, Ari and Anya were in the room. And they made like this whole crash course in their room from their bed to the bookshelf, to the bins that they put their toys in. And they were jumping off of the bed, onto the bookshelf, onto the bins. And all I heard, I didn't hear the fall, but I heard the scream and then the silence. And then the second round of scream came. I'm just like, okay, something happened. So I go in there, I'm just like, what happened? And Anya's like, um, 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 she, she fell. I said, how did she fall? Um... Um, she fell off of that. What is that? And I, she's pointing to the bookshelf. All right. So both of you are in trouble because why are you in here as the oldest allowing her to jump off of the bookshelf? So both of them got in trouble. Both of them had to clean up the room. Both of them were sent to their beds and both of them lost watching TV privileges the next day because both of them are learning that okay, it's not smart for us to do a lot of things. So if we think we're going to get in trouble for it, let's not do it. Anya is learning that because I'm the oldest, and even if I wasn't doing something, 
if I see that you're doing it and if I'm in the room while you do it, I'm going to get in trouble. So I got to be the one to stand up as a big sister and tell you no. I got to be the one to make an executive decision and say no. So with your kids, you have to talk them through like why they're in trouble. You got to talk them through what went wrong. You got to talk to them and ask them questions and be involved in what they like and what they're thinking and how they think. A lot of times, no one can tell a good parent about their kid because they know where their weaknesses are. They know what their strengths are. They know how their character is. Unless that parent is not invested, there is no way they will not know. Okay. No one can pick up the phone at school and tell me about Anya. I already know what she's going to do. I already know what she's going to pull. We already had the conversation in the car before she, before I dropped her off. No one will ever pick up the phone, ironically, and tell me about Ari's bad behavior. Because everybody at daycare with Ari lets her get away with everything because she's quote unquote cute. I don't want to raise any children of mine thinking they can get away with bad behavior and bad attitudes because they're cute. So that's something that I have to work against. Before um, Ari was really into the daycare, I was having that issue with Ari going to her dad's house. Ari's the only baby in her dad's house. The other two kids in her dad's house are grown teenagers. So Ari is used to always having what Ari wants and having a lot of people do for Ari when she comes to my house is Anya and it's me. And there's a limit to the things that you get. There's a limit to the attention that you're going to get. There's a limit to the things that you think you're about to get away with. So now um, I have to work on being consistent over here with her limitations and setting boundaries and her understanding that your looks don't save you in my house. And teaching her that looks are not going to save you in life in the long run because we all get old and we all get a little ugly, okay? So um, most kids don't learn unless they mess up, unfortunately. And hopefully with your kids, it's not a big mess up. But most kids don't learn um, when they mess up. I mean, unless they mess up. And if you catch your kid before they fall, you prevent learning and perspective from their thoughts. Now, I'm not saying every time your kid is going to do something catastrophic, not to catch them, not to stop them, not to prevent them. I'm saying the small things that can be learning tools to prevent the bigger things, allow those. Okay? Allow those. Um there's a lot of times in my 20s where my um, oldest brother was trying to tell me how something was going to go. And I was like, no, it's not going to go like that. This is different. And it went how he told me. And that was my lesson, you know. So as long as your kid is open to learning and learning from their mistakes, let them let them trip a little bit. Let them, you know, trip over their feet a little bit. It's all right. They're going to make it. You're going to be there. Um, you know, the encouragement, that guidance is what's really going to um help your child flourish into a great uh, young mind and uh, adult in life. So please nourish it, water it, and let them uh, fall a little bit. Thank you for listening to Cozy Womb. Bye. Bye.